Hi everyone! In this week's scholarship chemistry tutorial video, I am taking up the solution to question 1b from the 2015 exam. This will be our last scholarship titration problem for a while since we've looked at three or four over the past month. Uh, this problem has a particularly interesting context where we are quantitatively determining the concentration of carbon monoxide in a sample of air. We're going to do this by working backwards, uh, working backwards from a primary standard a uh, solution of potassium iodate whose concentration we know very well. We're going to work backwards through many stoichiometric steps. So applying the stoichiometric ratio to convert the number of moles of potassium iodate to something else and to something else and then eventually reaching carbon monoxide at the end. In this first uh, chemical reaction step, the carbon monoxide in the sample of air is reacted with diiodine pentoxide and that produces a stoichiometric amount of iodine. The iodine goes on to be titrated against um, thiosulfate, and that thiosulfate involved in that titration goes on to be titrated against the potassium iodate, our standard solution. So we're going to work backwards now, beginning with uh, determining the concentration of this uh, primary standard, and applying the stoichiometric ratios to convert the moles of potassium iodate to a mole of uh, thiosulfate and converting that amount to a molar amount of uh, iodine. And then lastly converting that mole amount of iodine and applying stoichiometry to determine the number of moles of carbon monoxide. And from there it's just a short step to determining its concentration. So once again starting with determining our concentration of the primary standard potassium iodate. We've got a mass here, we've got a volume, just like in our past video, this is really easy level 2 NCEA stuff, which we're um, quite familiar with. All we've got to do is apply these same two usual equations, where C is equal to N over V, and moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass. Combine those two equations, and we get our standard concentration. We're going to be plugging that into the next step, where this primary standard is going to be useful for determining uh, our concentration and number of moles of thiosulfate. So in this step uh, we're going to react the, our primary standard, the iodate, with some iodide to form some amount of iodine. That iodine is really what is being uh, titrated against uh, the thiosulfate. Uh, so we have a net equation here where we combine the two equations where our, our uh, potassium iodate reacts with iodide to form iodine, and then the second equation here shows what's happening in the titration, where that iodine that was produced in the first reaction is titrated against the thiosulfate. And we see here there's a ratio here, a stoichiometric ratio of 3 to 6, and between the iodate and the iodine it's 1 to 3. But overall, if we look at the ratio between iodate and thiosulfate in the net reaction, it's a 1 to 6 ratio in the net reaction. So we're going to apply that stoichiometric ratio in just a minute. So the first thing I'll do is figure out how many moles of iodate were involved in this titration by plugging in the concentration of our primary standard, which we had just determined previously, multiplying it by the volume used in the titration, that's the 10 mils quoted up here, and we'll have an amount in moles of potassium iodate involved in this titration. And we apply that stoichiometric ratio of 1 to 6 to convert that into the number of moles of thiosulfate involved in this titration. And there you go. And then we'll convert that into a concentration of thiosulfate by dividing it by the average titer volume. Okay? So that's the first step done in working backwards from the end to the beginning, converting that primary standard concentration into the amount of thiosulfate involved in this titration. All right. Now, we know that the carbon monoxide is reacted with I2O5, uh, which uh, produces some iodine and CO2. That's what it says in the, in the question. I've just got the equation written out here too. Now the resulting iodine produced was titrated against the thiosulfate, much as it was in the previous scenario where we were uh, uh, using our primary standard to determine the concentration of thiosulfate. It was re also reacted against iodine. Um, here we are uh, using our now standardized thiosulfate to really standardize the amount of iodine in the solution produced by the CO. And you can see here there's a bunch of stoichiometry which we can use. You know there's a 5 to 1 ratio 
uh, 5 to 1 ratio in terms of number of moles of CO reacting and producing one mole of iodine. And then that one mole of iodine goes on to react with two moles of thiosulfate. So there's a lot of stoichiometry we could use right now. So I'm going to ca calculate the number of moles of thiosulfate involved in this titration. See here I've plugged in the concentration of thiosulfate, which we just determined in our standardization procedure, multiplying it by the average uh, titer value in this titration here, 17.23 mils converted into liters. And now I'll start applying my stoichiometric ratios. So I've just figured out the number of moles of thiosulfate. Let's convert that into moles of iodine. And then from there, we'll leap over here to moles of car uh, carbon monoxide. So first I'm applying a one to two ratio here. So I've multiplied by a half to get moles of iodine. And to get moles of carbon monoxide here, it's a one to five ratio, five times as much. So I've multiplied by five. Uh, next, I'll turn the number of moles of carbon monoxide into a concentration by dividing it by the volume of our air sample, 23.2 liters. That's a huge sample uh, volume. Uh, not often you see a problem with uh, that large volume. Um, and then we've turned the concentration into uh, units of grams per liter from moles per liter. If this goes away in a minute, let me keep my mouse still uh, and see if that goes away. And so you can see that our concentration of carbon monoxide is quite small, uh, 0.00125 grams per liter. And that is the solution to this problem. We've calculated the concentration of carbon monoxide in the air in grams per liter using some stoichiometric ratios working backwards from a primary standard. Uh, I hope you're noticing a pattern here where a lot of these recent problems we've been looking at involved uh, working with a primary standard and just using stoichiometric ratios to uh, determine the concentration of other reactants or products. Thanks very much.